Hi and welcome to a new video here on the channel. Um, today we're going to be looking at a new process I've written called uh, Script Runner. Um, the primary focus of this is to de be deployed in a corporate environment. Um, you could also use it in your home lab should you wish. Um, its purpose is to execute PowerShell scripts with provided parameters. So let's take for example on your environment you have a series of PowerShell scripts that you wish to run um, that take parameters. What this process will do is run them in a defined order um, and do so in a, a, a contained form, should we say. Um, so let's take a look at the executable. Okay, this is it here and you can see we have, um, there's two parts, there's the input. So these are your, your values here. So we've got a text box, drop down, another drop down and a number selector. Uh, with a default value again with the drop down here with a default value um, and then we have um, some scripts here on the side you will see the first one is unticked um, and the description I've given it is this script will fail because it will fail um, so you'll notice at the moment I cannot press ok that's because the required fields are not populated so if I just pop some values in here um, select the drop down and you'll see the ok button um, comes available so if I begin locks the form stops any input and it's running the scripts in order um, the order is defined in the config which we'll go through upon completion we have a message box that lets us know so in this instance if I select the first script which is disabled by default you'll see we get an error um, and that's because it, it throws an error which we'll take a look at in a minute um, it'll tell us what script and everything Currently there's no way, um, depending on the needs of the users, um, to if a script fails, no of us will run past that point. Um, it's possible we can have some you know, application workflow integrated, um, but for this initial release that's, that's not in there. Um, so yeah, as I said, these fields here are created dynamically from the config file, um, and we will take a look at that now. So let me just close the application. So. Oh, initially, just while I remember, again with the, the corporate side of things, uh, there is an opportunity to add some corporate branding. So you can see we've got a logo placeholder here, um, as well as the title. If I pop into the application config, um, these two values here can be ignored. They were from uh, legacy, should we say. Um, I do intend to integrate them in the future, but for now you can ignore them. Um, so the ones we care about here are the is the form title, which is self-explanatory the logo path and the splitter orientation. The splitter orientation is an option over horizontal or vertical um, and that dictates where this splitter is. Um, this is the horizontal, the vertical would mean that it's, uh, it's landscape essentially. Uh, the logo path, um, if the image is not present or it doesn't uh, or this value is null then you won't get a logo so what I can do, I can simulate that now, save that run it again you'll see we, we no longer get the logo um, again that's pure choice should you wish to have the logo or not okay so let's look at the config um, now the config is what drives the the form essentially so it dictates what um, controls we have and what scripts it's going to be running um, if I bring up so you can see this script will fail and these other scripts uh, they are referenced down here and the scripts array um, and we will dive into these uh, in just a moment but let me just minimize all of these so th there's two main objects we've got the controls and scripts uh, if we just begin by looking at a control so there is four types of control no three sorry types of controls we've got a text box a drop down and a number selector uh, the first one is a text box so let's look at that. we have a label property um, which is what it says on the tin, it's the, the label. We have an alias, um, each control has an alias and that's used to reference the parameter value um, in the script. We'll, we'll take a look at that there in a moment. The type, uh, again, dictates what type it is. Default, this is contextual for each control, so for a text box, uh, the default would be a string. So, for example, I can pop hello. We'll take a look at that change in just a moment. Required, uh, this is whether the value is required input. So you can see here we don't have okay 
unless all of the required values have been set. You can see we get it there. So that, that dictates that this box is required for execution. Locked means it's read only. So we can actually test that in just a moment. Uh, and tab index, for the most part, this can be ignored, but if you wish to, it, it's the, the tab index here. So it's what dictates, you know, when you press tab, which one you go to. Okay, so let's save these changes in the config and start that up again. Okay, so for some reason locked doesn't work. That's a bug, we'll have to get that fixed. That should be fixed by the time you get this. Um, and obviously required true, and we've now got the default value of PC. So that's for the uh, text box control. Let's look at the um, the first drop down here. So you can see we've got the label, some drop down, and then we've got the alias. Uh, we have the type here, which is combo box, and then we have the values array. So simply these are the values in there. Default in this case is a number, an integer, and it is the index of the value you wish to have as a default. Um, so I'm picking zero, so that will be the zeroth uh, index there. Required true, locked false, and the again the tab index there. Okay. Next we have the uh, another drop down, so basically just the same. This one with a default null. And finally we have the number selector, so that is the type of numeric up down with a default value of 69, uh, and again required. So. As before, I've alluded to this uh, alias. Um, this realistically can be anything, you don't need a percents, um, but it's just some um, string that's referenced throughout the process to be referenced in these scripts. So if we have a look at the first script here, which is intended to fail, we'll have a look at the code in a moment. Um, so you can see here we've got the description that's displayed in the body here. We have the full path. Um, at the moment, I'm using the relative path. So you can see test scripts, and then we will have Within there, we have the test fail, which you see here. Uh, enabled false, so as you can see here, that means that by default, this will be enabled, or in this case, disabled, because it's false. Uh, and then we have the parameters array. So the array on the parameters is based on a key value. Um, and you can see here, the value is uh, the alias that we referenced in the control. So all that essentially means is that for this param text value, the value will be what we've referenced here. So if I look in the test fail script, you can see we have our parameters here, all are mandatory, um, and we have the text value there. So whatever I've named the parameter here will be this key, and similarly with the, the others there as well. Um, it's up to you whether you you know throw errors or not. Um, the application isn't at the moment responsible for logging. So again, logging will be down to you in your scripts. This is purely just to run the processes. Um, but you can quickly see how, you know, having scripts in order, passing them values that you create, um, gives, you know, freedom in not giving your users a, a PowerShell script, for lack of a better term, and you can, you know, you can brand it as you wish. Um, some people like to create a, a PowerShell form themselves, but I feel that most of the time clutters up the work you're trying to do. Uh, a lot of the time your PowerShell scripts will be small modules um, and you don't want to messy them up with a, a big Windows form. Um, so this just gives it all in a nice neat package. Currently the, the only way to construct this configuration is by hand. Um, I am working on a sister project that will construct these um, with a nice Windows form. Currently that's not released yet um, but you'll be updated when. Um, all information and documentation will be on the GitHub page listed below. Um, and obviously, if you have any issues, feature requests, or anything, please do contribute or, or post an issue. Um, and I'll be happy to answer any questions in the comments. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Um, again, I hope you enjoy the, uh, the program. And let me know if it works for you. Let me know if it doesn't work. And thank you. Take care. Goodbye.